Hi and welcome to this lesson on diffraction. I'll explain what diffraction is in just a moment, first a demonstration. Here you can see water ripples passing through an aperture, a small slit, and as it passes through we see an interesting thing, the waves bend. Now if we narrow the aperture, we see that the waves bend even more, and that is the relationship between the wavelength and the aperture. But this is exactly what diffraction is. Okay, so we just saw how that water waves um, in that ripple tank uh, made these strange circular waves once they passed through the aperture, that little gap. And the question might now be why? Why does the waves, or why do the waves bend when it passes th through the aperture? Well, that is what we call diffraction. So diffraction is the ability of a wave to spread out in f uh, wave fronts as they pass through a small aperture or around a sharp object. Okay, so what we saw was the following. If I had to recreate that, we had a, an aperture, okay, in other words, some sort of obstruction and a very small gap and we had our our waves pass through so what I'm going to do is draw wave fronts for the crests of the wave so there is one crest then here we have a, a trough okay and then another crest another trough I'll draw the troughs at the end another crest another crest there's a crest now I, I, I try to but I don't seem to do it very well uh, draw them with the same wavelength so obviously the distance between the um, the consecutive wave fronts okay remember what wave fronts are they're connecting all the points on a wave that um, that are in phase okay so this distance here is lambda okay that's the wavelength and then there's a wave front that is just passing through the aperture now what is happening here because afterwards after it passes through it seems to be doing this okay I think I'm doing it a little bit too close to each other. Okay. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. Okay, there's the new wave fronts and there's the troughs. Okay, I'm not doing them pretty at all okay but there we go that is what it seems like is happening now why is it happening like that well the answer lies in what we said before is that um, on on the um, or it follows from Hagen's principle so you remember that Hagen's principle says that we can predict the next wave front by drawing little wavelets on a wave front so if I were to zoom in here I wonder if I can can do it like this if if I were to just take that part and I were to zoom in what will I see okay I'll have my aperture there it's my aperture and then here is my wave front sorry that wave front is in blue and then on my wave front I find particles so there's the particles on the wave front okay and each one according to Hagen's principle each one of these particles becomes the source of a wavelet with the same uh, wavelength um, than than the original wave and those wavelets are circular okay so they are circular so let's say I think it's a bit, bit more than that let's say there is the first wavelet okay here is the second wavelet the third wavelet the 
fourth one oh, and the fifth one one two three four five okay here's the last wavelet okay don't think I drew them so nicely but maybe you get the idea and according to Hagen's principle we find the next wave by drawing a tangent to these okay so if we draw a tangent to them like uh, then there is our our next wave and it does go down here however depending on um, on the aperture and the distance um, of the uh, the distance of the aperture and the wavelength that will determine just how much it bends along here okay so does it only bend to there does it bend to there does it bend to there that all depends on uh, on the wavelength and the aperture and how those two relate we're not going to look at that rather we're just looking at at why does it bend well it bends because mainly because this one here at the end his circular wave front has now got more bend to it if I can say it like that so what is going to happen for for the next wave wave front well now we need to consider the particles on this wave front okay the particles on this wave front and the same thing applies let's draw them in red okay if I had to draw the wave front, uh, the little wave lids for these. Okay, oh, I'm struggling with the red. Okay, we've got. Okay, I don't think I'm doing a good job at at this, but I do think you guys are clever enough to figure out what I am doing. Okay, just drawing little, almost like half circles. Um, or just a just a semicircle on each each one, and eventually that what I get there at the end, this becomes my when I draw now a tangent to these, that becomes my new wave front. Now once again, you can see it doesn't bend all that much, okay? And yet the the wave front I'm drawing is bent all the way, and that is again because it it depends on what is the relationship between the wavelength and the aperture so the the smaller the wavelength and the smaller the aperture the more um well actually the smaller the wavelength and the um larger the aperture the less it will bend and vice versa okay so let's say it's going to bend about at that angle okay about at that angle then this is just where i will stop drawing my my waves and the next one will probably look something like like this okay well I think so I, I think that explains diffraction uh, well enough and um, for now this is good enough later on we'll see how light actually also has wave like properties when we pass light through a very small aperture then it, it has this strange effect at the end where we where we also see the interference of waves and the diffraction of light. We'll see you in the next video where we are taking a look at uh, sound waves. Okay, so see you there.